So, uh, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, very happy to have you here on this. Uh, Introduction to frugal innovation. Um, as you know, most types of innovation will focus initially on, let's say, high end markets. Uh, what's special about frugal innovation is that you focus more on, let's say, um, mid markets or bottom markets. And that requires, let's say, a special uh, framework of thinking um, because there are some very specific challenges with that. Uh, one being, for instance, cost effectiveness, very important. So you have to think differently about it. The second part, which is very um, challenging sometimes, is how do you get your products to your customers? Because sometimes we're talking about remote areas uh, like in India or Africa or South America, and that's not always obvious to do that. So, um, we will talk about these things more in detail. First, we will give some examples of frugal innovation. After that, we will talk about specifically, let's say, the systems to support frugal innovation. And then we will uh, let's talk about the, the financial aspects and delivery aspects also. Uh, and this will be the basis of the discussion. But before we do so, it's best um, we introduce the panel for today. Um, so I suggest... Um, Maybe, um, Noel, you can start. Thank you very much. Um, it's nice to be here, and I thank the organizer, Frank Jogen Richter, for inviting me. My name is Dr. Noel Akbata, and um, I'm based out of Nigeria. I'm a strategy and innovation consultant, and we deal with um, several of the multinational companies based here in Nigeria, and most especially helping governments in developing um, social impact initiatives that can be easily scalable. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Alexander, can you introduce yourself briefly? Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Likewise, a pleasure to be here with this distinguished panel. My name is Alexander Malaket. I'm the president of Opus Advisory Services based in Toronto, Canada, and we uh, consult and advise on international trade, supply chains, and supply chain and trade-related financing and risk. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Cyprian. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like also to thank to the organizer, to Frank Jürgen Richter, for inviting me again to take part to these fantastic conferences. And um, today I am honored to share the stage uh, with you together in discussing this interesting subject, which is the frugal innovation. Uh, we are based in Romania. We are a group of companies and we have businesses in more lines and the basic areas where we are active is the um, uh, industry and uh, developing and manufacturing in automotive and non-automotive industry. The second one is financial investments. The third one is the construction sector. And the fourth one, I would say, is the international consultancy and representation of companies. Uh, where in Romania uh, are we based? We are based in northwest part of Romania, very close uh, to the border with Hungary and Ukraine, so in the Transylvanian part of Romania, which is better known by everybody. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Uh, ben? Uh, hi, everybody. And uh, it's uh, great to be here and as part of this uh, distinguished panel. Uh, my name is Ben Crawford. and partnering with governments around the world. Thank you. Uh, myself, I'm co-founder and CEO of a Swiss biotech company. The company is called Biolingus, and we uh, focus on sublingual delivery of biological products. Uh, just to give an example, uh, most of you will know insulin. Insulin is a drug taken by diabetes patients, and unfortunately, it has to be injected uh, every day by the patients who, who take it. Uh, with our technology, we make a small pill which you put under the tongue uh, and this replaces then the injections. 
And so what is interesting is that although it is very high tech, um, it is also low cost. So its affordability is very good and that makes it interesting. Um, and it's also very cost effective. Um, uh, cost effective. And um, in addition to that, actually, it's very, it makes the products very stable. So normally insulin, if you ship it to somewhere in Africa, you would need a cold chain, um, which makes it very difficult. With our product, with our technology, you may not need that. So actually the delivery part becomes much easier. And so our technology and products touch two elements of what is called frugal innovation. So first of all, the cost effectiveness, and secondly, uh, the delivery of the products. Um, so that is what we do. And with this, I would say, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> let's maybe start with talking about some examples of frugal innovation. I gave the example of, of our company, which is not very typical, but it is a frugal uh, innovation. Um, but let's maybe start with, uh, with Noel. Maybe could you give some uh, examples from your experience world? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, like we know, COVID-19 um, crippled the world uh, the most part of 2020. And in the region where I come from, it was it was quite new to us because we had just dealt with the Ebola um, uh, situation some years before that. Coincidentally, I have a background in medicine. I, I, my, my first degree is in medicine and surgery. Uh, so I, I, I pretty much understood what it will take for a nation like Nigeria to deal with the pandemic. Uh, definitely, we saw what the pandemic did to the world, put billions of people within closed doors, um, separated loved ones for long periods of time, and um, exacerbated poverty levels, which was already um, crippling the economy of most African countries. Um, rising to the occasion, an arm of the Nigerian army, the Nigerian Air Force, quickly discovered that there was a, there was a need for ventilators. Nigeria had um, close to about 15 functional ventilators in all the hospitals um, put together in the country. And what the Nigerian Air Force did was to notice that gap and decided to repurpose some of their equipment to create a frugal innovation, which was a ventilator that became useful in the health facilities around the country. Um, the, the, the name of the ventilator was called NAF Event, and um, it, it, it gained maturity and you know widespread acceptance around the country. But just like you know, um, Nigeria has always struggled with standardization problems and commercialization issues. So taking that frugal innovation from within the Nigerian space to a more Africa-centric space or a more global space now becomes the issue, uh, which, which, which now you know, you know, um, sets the stage for the kinds of conversations we're going to have today to help developing countries understand that it goes beyond just frugally innovating. There has to be a commensurate business model innovation. There has to be a social impact um, 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 strategy, you know, tied into that innovation. You know, a lot goes into this. So um, I think I'll open the floor with this and I'll yield back to my other colleagues to contribute. Okay, to thank you. That's a very interesting and relevant example during uh, COVID times. Um, maybe Cyprian, you want to give some examples from your um, experience also? So it's uh, very interesting about uh, frugal innovation to talk, and uh, we have a lot of examples worldwide. Uh, I would like, uh, because we have uh, quite a limited time, to, to focus on some basic ideas, uh, because everybody, when is talking about the frugal innovation, the term frugal is understood by many persons as being something cheap. But actually, it's, it's not the point. From uh, my point of view, when we are discussing about the frugal innovation, we are discussing about innovation which is developed with limited resources. And uh, I think the basic characteristics of the frugal innovation is affordability. Uh, the second one is sustainability. And the third one is inclusiveness. So that uh, uh, inclusiveness, it means uh, that it is uh, uh, available to a very large scale of persons. These are, from my point of view, the basic characteristics of, of frugal innovation. And frugal innovation does not necessarily mean something, I repeat, cheap, but something which uh, uh, fulfills these uh, three characteristics that I tried to explain. 
when we try to discuss about examples, as I told you, there are plenty of examples because we can uh, discuss uh, related to the COVID situation, what happened at the beginning of the crisis when uh, everybody was thinking how to have the sanitizers and a lot of companies were switching from producing, for example, cosmetics into producing only this kind of uh, hand sanitizers or specific sanitizers to fight against the COVID. Another important example, I think, can be given by uh, making a short uh, 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 reminder about the face visors that were used by the lot, a lot of people. And this is something uh, like being uh, uh, improvisation. We could call this like, like this because at that time there was a lack of masks for a lot of people uh, around the world. And uh, those who were in the front line, especially the doctors, had to protect themselves and also the other uh, persons, the patients, which uh, had the, the COVID problem. And this is another example of frugal innovation adaptability, uh, which was uh, provided by the medical sector. And um, uh, finally, I think the UV lamps, which were used at the beginning, especially is something very good as an example. Now, if we go uh, to look uh, worldwide to what frugal innovation can be um, uh, associated with as examples, I would like to give an example from Romania, which I consider is, is, is very, very interesting because um, I'm talking here about a company which is called Pili. And uh, this company is a biotechnological company which is developing labels for fruits and vegetables. But those labels are biological labels which when you are washing the fruits and the vegetables are, uh, are cleaning of uh, bacteria and some viruses, those fruits and those vegetables. So it's something very interesting because we could call this a frugal innovation. It's not the most expensive possible. It uh, can be used worldwide. It can be used in uh, less developed countries. And uh, it's very, uh, very, very well uh, fitted for the needs that the mankind has nowadays. So this is something very interesting because you just take the label and you put on the fruits that you are using. And when you are using the uh, uh, the, the the water to wash to clean the label, uh, uh, it's uh, I told you it's it's a kind of substance actually that label. Uh, it's cleaning those products and uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people in the world can benefit of. Yeah. Another example, and I will be very short about this, I was impressed, it was before the pandemic and it was in Uganda, uh, about a, a boy, a student, a young boy, which was very concerned about the fact that about one third of the food is wasted in Uganda. And he tried to find a solution for stopping this for a lot of farmers which cannot earn as much money as they could have if they would have enough uh, possibility for storage, for example. And he developed a product which is called a sparky dryer, but this sparky dryer, uh, which is really drying the products, uh, the fruits, the vegetables that they are harvesting in, in Uganda, is something so simple. Uh, it's actually uh, made of uh, all kind of uh, plate sheets that he can find uh, uh, in Uganda and uh, uh, it's very good and uh, for those persons, for those farmers which bought this product from his side, uh, the uh, income in some cases was raising about 400% and why? Because those 30% of waste fruits and products which could not be stored and were just wasted uh, were dried and uh, because the fruits and products were dried they can uh, be stored for a long period of time, going from two, three days, which is, we could say, an average for the fruits and products, uh, up to two years, depending on, on yeah. each type of fruits and products. This, uh, this is an example which yeah. uh, impressed me, and uh, it was before the pandemic. Yeah. Okay, so so you touched a very interesting point there, Sipkin, that... Uh, um, Frugal innovation is not just about delivery or being very cost effective. Also, the way it is developed and sustainability uh, is an important element. <clears throat> and I can testify from our own company. So actually, the inspiration for our, let's say, technology in our company comes from nature. We looked at how...
costs, uh, but they're extremely effective. Um, and so we, we and sustainable also. But let's let's go a bit further on another point, which is um, let's say frugal innovation is a bit different. So so um, do we need different systems to support this frugal innovation? And and one, for instance, of course, is financing. Do we need uh, different financing systems to support frugal innovation? And maybe I would like to ask uh, Alexander if you can give some views on that. On, on the financing of frugal innovation. Yes, thank you very much, Eve. So uh, from my perspective, look, the, the short answer is yes, we probably do. Um, there's also another answer, which is to say, and, and you've all made the point, uh, Noah and Cyprian, in the way that you've framed the, your, your contributions as well, that it's when you talk about frugal, it's, also, it's partly a cost issue, but it's also an affordability issue, more broadly spoken. And affordability means access to finance and the ability to get to working capital and all those sorts of things. Um, when we link this conversation up to supply chain, so because we're using COVID and we're using agri-food and so on, biotech as examples, the supply chain dynamic becomes very, very important. And what in my world often, often happens is that you get stuck on the logistics and the physical movement of the goods and people forget that all of that requires some kind of financing in order to be viable. Um, we know from research that was done and continues to be done by the Asian Development Bank in Manila, the IFC that's part of the World Bank, that there's something in the range of $1.5 trillion per year of unmet demand for trade-related financing that drives these supply chains. We are seeing in recent years innovations that are driving deeper into the supply chains, into the SMEs and the micro-enterprises. So this is exactly that segment of clients that you want to support in terms of this kind of frugal innovation. Make sure that those suppliers with very specialist products, typically in emerging markets, also have access to that liquidity. So from a trade perspective, we are definitely looking at new techniques. We're looking at payable finance structures. We're looking at invoice-based structures that are innovating in terms of getting into that deep tier financing. And certainly, you know, we've had this conversation in our preparation for the panel, um, you know, venture capital that looks at more of this kind of frugal innovation type sector would also be very welcome together with, I think Cyprian mentioned impact, and I think, Mo, you mentioned impact investing as well as part of this discussion. Yeah, okay. You know, even recently, uh, you know, there's, a, there's some, in, some efforts underway to make the UN Sustainable Development Goals line up with SME access to finance issues and that will include impact investing and, and, and uh, frugal innovation. So from my perspective, the answer is yes, we need more. But the good news is that there is progress in developing these kinds of innovations. I'll say one more thing here in terms of the application of this, which is I, I learned recently of a steel, a specialized steel manufacturer who early in the pandemic repurposed their additive manufacturing, which is the whole 3D printing piece. Uh, of their capability to to print effectively uh, masks for in support of their local community. So there are these really impactful, innovative, um, frugal innovations that that can be financed through either public sector support or through innovative private sector and impact spending. Yeah, uh, Ben, may I ask you? You come really from the IT world and and digitization. In terms of financing, you see. Any, any innovative or different ways of financing uh, frugal innovations in this area? Well, I think, uh, in a way, the, the, uh, the Internet and the many um, mostly private companies that, that, that uh, work together in order to enable the Internet in itself provides a, a, um, a framework and a foundation for encouraging and enabling frugal innovation at a like uh, unheard of level if you think of um, the amount of people that lost their jobs and had to work from home all over the world uh, the only thing, business that many of them could do involved the internet and the internet had made uh, um, uh, innovative, innovation and innovative business practices uh, affordable through its model of um, of software as a service and subscription subscriptions. So, for instance, to build a website now, you buy a domain name, you don't buy it outright, you buy a subscription to it, hosting package and subscription and so on, which essentially means that you can build a business, you can build the Facebooks of the future 
with a very small outlay and a gradual increase in revenues uh, are proportionate to your investment. Um, and that that technology through the combination and, and, and obviously, uh, again, the, 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 the sustainable uh, um, development objectives of the United Nations include universal access to the internet. Um, we, we have to thank the telcos. We have to thank the handset manufacturers for bringing down the pricing constantly and even the uh, uh, Google and Facebook for for very aggressively pushing to get more internet access to the world. But as we all know, that's more about becoming a consumer of the internet. I guess where we, where we come on to sit on top of that is giving people the tools to become a producer of the internet, okay. of, of having their own businesses. And that is more affordable than ever. It's more possible to reach more customers cheaper and, and, and all over the world than it's ever been imaginable before. So, so certainly, and that's generally financed by, um, by, 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 you know, American, uh, uh, investment funds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I, I'm curious to hear, uh, Noel, if I may, from your side, based in Nigeria, uh, in terms of financing, do you see any creative or different ways happening there? Um, well, I would like to state that, you know, frugality is first of all a mindset, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a mindset that is endemic, you know, with especially amongst uh, developing economies, emerging markets and all that, because uh, we are used to having to frugality. There is a gulf between um, the understanding from government and frugal innovation from, you know, the level of the people. Um, like I said, the ability of a frugal innovation to be wide, to be adopted on a widespread level is primarily dependent on most of the support it receives, especially from government um, venture capitalists, angel investors, and all of that. Uh, right up until this time, I can tell you categorically, and I'll use an example. Um, there, there is a young gentleman who developed a frugal innovation in the electricity space. Um, I am the founder of the Nigerian Electricity Market Summit Group, which brings together most of the players in the electricity, in the electricity, electricity supply industry to discuss issues on an annual basis. And this young gentleman uh, created a generator that practically runs on water, 100% on water. And he tested the generator live on national television, one of the you know, largest um, um, broadcasting houses in Nigeria. And it received widespread acceptance from the populace because, as you know, Nigeria, which is one of the largest um, economies in Africa, well, basically the largest economy in Africa, based on the recently rebased GDP figures, uh, Nigeria has a power problem. And this has been with us for quite a number of years. And we're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel up until this point. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole country really accepted this young man's innovation. But I'll tell you that up until now, this young man has gone into something else because he received practically no support from most of the government organizations he approached. Um, I had to practically intervene to try to see how we could rally fi financing and more education, more training um, towards his effort, which I'm, I'm, in, I'm currently in the process of doing right now. So you would, you would see that in this part of the world, frugal innovations, though widespread, are not really supported um, by most of the funding institutions you have um, you know, scattered around the place. They would rather fund the Dangotes, they would rather fund the Boa groups, they would rather fund you know, most of these big companies that yeah. are, already have an established structure, an established system of engaging with international markets. Yeah. They would rather do business with those ones. So these are the problems we're having. So first of all, I would say that a national reorientation of the importance of frugality based on the impact of COVID-19, increasing poverty levels across the globe. The world just has to go frugal um, to protect mm -hmm. our, our 
environment, to protect our resources, and to protect a lot of other things, uh, a lot of other ans ancillary things going forward. So to, to drive that frugal mindset on a national level, governments across the globe need to understand where we are right now as a world and understand that frugality is the way forward and nation states have to now develop national strategies around how to support frugal innovators and how to support frugal innovations to grow you know from from just within their local spaces to a more um, um, to, to more global adoption yeah, these are some very interesting thoughts uh, uh, from your side, Noel. Maybe I can ask Cyprian. Cyprian, you're also active in politics. Can yes. you give us a bit of a kind of, let's say, uh, national or even global politics view on, on this? Can global politics help here with frugal innovation or global financing? Yeah, so uh, I, I think, and my point of view is that the politicians are interested in quick results because the uh, voting uh, moment, the elections are coming always in the next day. Of course, I'm uh, quoting uh, the next day can be one, two, three or four years usually in most countries, but they are thinking to short time measures. Uh, from the business side point of view, the difference is that the businesses are thinking for a long time. And um, for this purpose, I think, and I wanted to um, discuss this issue, um, I want to propose, and uh, I think uh, each of us and uh, most of the participants in the Horasis Historian meeting can think about this, we can discuss globally uh, in establishing an international bank or financial institution which to sustain with micro credits, uh, with micro loans, uh, the frugal innovations worldwide, especially in developing countries. I think this could be a very good step forward to uh, helping the humanity, to helping the mankind, to uh, give the best results, um, to give the best possibilities to quickly, rapidly innovating, and those best possible results which are proven by this basic uh, innovation, which is the frugal innovation, to be taken by specialized institutions, by research and development centers from corporate side or by big universities to be developed with all the possibilities that those big companies and those uh, uh, important and very uh, big universities have uh, compared to uh, small companies or individuals which are usually involved in uh, frugal innovation. Uh, from political point of view, the politicians, I repeat, are uh, extremely interested in quick results, short-term results, but when we are discussing in developing the frugal innovation as a basic step for global innovation, for developing the research and development of all the mankind, I think we can um, discuss more and even think about the possibilities of financing because this is a very important issue and uh, after we have the results from this basic level, we can further develop all the good results uh, with benefits for everybody. Yeah, and just a question to follow up on that. Who should handle this? Is this something to be steered by United Nations and then distributed to other countries, or how would you see that? Uh, I see exactly as you say. I think the United Nations is the international organization which could be in the center of uh, uh, finding, uh, founding such an institution. Uh, they have all the needed platforms to generate an international cooperation between member countries and uh, non-member countries because there are some jurisdictions in the world which are very developed and are not members in the United Nations, but to bring everybody together in um, this, uh, I think, noble purpose for everybody. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that would be a great suggestion and maybe we should make that to Horasis or something like that and they try to take that further. I will note that down. Um, yeah. So, you know, from, from just yeah. one, one quick yeah. intervention. Yeah. From, from me, if I may, I, I really like this idea, Cyprian. I think this has a lot of potential, and it picks up very well on the points that Noel was making. Uh, one, two observations from me very quickly. You asked um, Eve in terms of the digital aspect of finance, and I can tell you just briefly that COVID has massively accelerated the thinking around digitizing finance and digitizing trade. Um, the International Chamber of Commerce in Paris, where we make a lot of the rules that govern this activity, is very, very focused on this. So there will be, there are already some very significant progress points on that. I mean, there were literally 
tens of thousands of sets of trade documents stuck in warehouses in China and India at the start of COVID that would have frozen finance under normal circumstances. And the, the community figured out how to make it work without having access to all this documentation. So there was there's some real progress there. The second thing in Cyprian, on your point about having the UN come in on this frugal financing, frugal innovation financing piece, I, I agree. I think this is a good idea. There's another level of the conversation, which is the network of development banks that are out there that could help. So the African mm -hmm. Development Bank that is now in, I think it's in Abidjan, uh, the, the ADB in Manila, as I mentioned, the IFC in Washington. So there are these regional, mm -hmm. IFC is a global entity, part of the World Bank, and then there are the regional entities that do a lot of mm -hmm. this development work and your point about microcredit of course we mean in Bangladesh is the textbook you know example of that so we have examples we can follow to build a frugal innovation version of these types of programs so I think this is a really good outcome of this discussion okay yeah I, I agree with that so so now we talked to we, we went to a very high level to United Nations let's drop down a bit to the earth again and talk about another aspect of uh, frugal innovation which is very fundamental it's the delivery how do you get uh, these frugal innovations to uh, the final customer uh, because it's uh, it, it's not easy. Um, just to give some examples from my side, I think it was um, um, someone suggested to me that actually in Rwanda there's an interesting example of uh, using drones to deliver uh, blood to hospitals. Yeah, maybe Noel, you also know that, and it's it's combining let's say modern technology to to make delivery more effective uh, in, in a certain way. Um, I can also give the example of our company. Um, we, we can stabilize biological natural products very much beyond what, what normally would be. And as a result, we can eliminate the cold chain of delivering medicines to remote areas. And that's also something very um, important. Um, but maybe one aspect which we don't, didn't touch on very much, I say it, so Ben was disappearing, but it's uh, actually with regards to services. The internet has made a huge change in how we can deliver, let's say, services to the people. And I want to ask Ben, but I will do that when he's come back. But digitization is important and the use of apps is important. Does, does someone wants to comment on that, how we see that? It's because um, the internet changed a lot of things. I can give an example of myself from the biotech world. There is a company called Quia again. They develop diagnostic tests, um, for instance, for, for HPV. Uh, and so they develop tests adapted specially for Africa. Um, and now the delivery is not just a logistical delivery. They actually simplified the way that these tests, diagnostic tests are used. Uh, they also changed the education so that actually with the, the people locally with very little means and very little training can actually use these very sophisticated um, tools actually. So education is also part of it and, and how you deliver that. I mean, training is done by videos. These are things that uh, let's say before 20 years, uh, we couldn't think about that. Um, I don't know, uh, Alexander. Yeah, the, I, I agree. I mean, I think from my perspective, what I'm, I'll be watching very carefully is the 3D printing and additive manufacturing space because having the 3D printer locally in developing and emerging markets, never mind, in OECD economies, wherever, you know, you, you fundamentally redefine the logistics and the supply chain. You take away a lot of the cost and complexity and you get a lot of um, the ability to effectively send a schematic across the world and print that component or that item locally and it can be anything from as i mentioned earlier something simple as a mask and something as complex as a as a as, a, as an artificial piece of human body that you use for you know for 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 injuries or amputations or whatever it is so the range of potential of this additive manufacturing i think is tremendous the scalability is starting to prove itself and from a frugality point of view from what i'm able to observe the affordability of this infrastructure is starting to get to a place where we can start to think about it at scale yeah, ex excellent so so ben we had a question we were yeah. talking about the delivery of frugal innovation and you gave some examples of change log logistics education and so on but with you from as an expert in the IT world, could you give some examples of the impact of digitization in general to delivery, let's say by using apps or whatever things? 
absolutely. I mean, um, I mean, obviously, uh, digitization has uh, has has revolutionised and completely uh, um, destroyed a, a lot of uh, industries that were based on manufacturing and so on. If you think about the music industry, the amazing transformation from from manufacturing and shipping records, CDs, cassettes, and, and and the like all over the world with bricks and mortar stores and so on to simply having every piece of music ever recorded available on your telephone. It's uh, there. I, I can't imagine a more revolutionary change to a um, to distribution channels than that. Um, I would like to just uh, step back a, a little bit and talk one more thought on financing, and that is, um, you know, I, 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 as a as the CEO of a, of a listed company, I, I do absolutely feel that the private sector has ha, has an important role in financing uh, frugal innovation as well. And in thinking about ways that government can affect that, I, 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 it does occur to me the example of our, our contract with the uh, government of Slovakia, which has given us uh, the, the has acknowledged our role as managing the national country code of Slovakia.sk, but in exchange for that responsibility and the revenues that come with that, we are required by the government to create a fund to, to fund um, innovation in areas like education, cyber security, uh, uh, um, uh, technology for disadvantaged peoples and so on, which normally would not get, get such direct funding. And, um, and we've seen many innovations uh, uh, which are also uh, not only building the digital economy of Slovakia, but also addressing social problems as well. Uh, coming direct from the pocket of a private company through a fairly simple uh, uh, um, contractual mechanism coming from the government. So I think that kind of creativity as well to bring in the private sector with its efficiencies and, 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 um, and understanding of the business requirements around innovation is something that, that we should also um, put on the agenda. Okay. So maybe uh, just a question for Noel also, from your side, do you see any specific challenge or, or more even better solutions for, let's say, delivery of these frugal innovations? It seems like screen has frozen a bit. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think... From our side, okay, go on. side uh, looking at is leveraging the, the, the digital more um, because that has a lot of access. It seems like while talking about digital delivery, we have a bit of a delivery for, problem. For a lot of things. Uh, you're blanking out. Um, so. I suggest maybe, unless Alexander, you have some comments on this topic. The issue of more? telemedicine in the COVID-19. Okay. In the the connection is very bad. Um, no, uh, health. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I heard you saying telemedicine. That's indeed uh, an excellent uh, example actually, of, of, of uh, let's say, um, in a certain way, frugal uh, delivery also in the medicine area. Um, so we are entering the last five minutes, and I would like to close this actually, and maybe if there would be further questions. So as, as a kind of closure, I would last, like to ask every one of you to make like a statement of your vision about frugal innovation. So very briefly, something you feel strongly about that we should do with frugal innovation uh, as a kind of final message. Uh, maybe Cyprian, you want to start? Okay, I will start because I uh, wanted uh, to say anyway two words about the delivery of the frugal innovation results. 
And actually, my point of view, and this is connected to what I was proposing about that international financial institution or bank, like a special purpose vehicle for frugal innovation, I would like to point out that the, the, the most important things about the delivery are connected and are going around uh, some issues like the intellectual property of the uh, results of the frugal innovation. The second one is the uh, supply chains and the uh, the third one is the involvement of the technological evolution in all these uh, uh, businesses mm -hmm. that can yeah. be actually seen as businesses. The, it's very important to see that when we have the intellectual property secured, this can be done when you have a good result of the frugal innovation, which is financed. And this is why I told you this is connected to what I was previously uh, talking yeah. about. The second thing that I want to, to emphasize is that the supply chains now can be seen. Everybody was talking now during the COVID crisis that the supply chains will be broken all over the world and the things will not work anymore. Uh, things were not like this and will not be like this in the future because the supply chains will be uh, developed in the future based not on the low cost scenario like uh, most companies were thinking about, but uh, based on the best cost scenario. And this means that uh, the investments related to fragile innovation will be developed uh, as close as possible to the final client uh, of the frugal okay. innovation yeah. that somebody We, we uh, have to developed. close here. Maybe, Alexander, one final statement from your side? Thank you, Yves. So my, my call would be to pick up on the notion that frugal innovation needs to become part of the mainstream from an awareness raising perspective, from a public policy perspective, from a financing perspective. So I think it needs to become uh, part of our mainstream thinking in terms of a post-COVID recovery. Yeah, very good. Uh, ben? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I would I would finish by saying that um, the massive scale um, of infrastructure that's available through um, through internet technology has actually reduced the cost of innovation, of distribution, of uh, creation, of reaching people enormously. And um, and as that scale continues, the cost will reduce. But we need to make sure that um, those costs are being used and people are being trained and understand how to create and how to innovate using those tools and not simply use them for sending photos to their grandmothers and uh, watching cat videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And from my perspective, I have a final comment also closely related to the one that Alexander was making that I also think frugal innovation should go mainstream. But what, what I mean with that is everyone who thinks about innovating a product or service should, as a kind of exercise, try to make its product or service frugal or think how he could do that. Because just the process of going, of thinking of how could I make my product or process frugal, I think it will make people very creative. Yeah. And you may end up with a frugal product or not, but just a thinking process is very valuable, I think, and everybody should try to embed it in the overall innovation process as well. With this, I would like to thank you very much. You were a great panel. I think we, should, we could uh, talk a few hours about this. It would be uh, very interesting. Um, and I hope we can have some takeaways also um, for Horasis as a group. Um, and for instance, the example that uh, United Nations should take a leading role in, let's say, uh, leading frugal innovation around the world. I will uh, propose that to, to Frank Jurgen also to take that further. So thank, thank you very you. much for this great uh, discussion and I wish you a good day. Thank you, Yves. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.